Good morning, good morning. Here we go. <laughs> Just made it this morning. Just. <laughs> Pool here. Okay, it looks cloudy out there, and it is. It's a bit cloudy, but the forecast is for uh, a sizzler today. It's going to get hot, apparently, up to like whatever. Hot, not hot compared to the Texas temperatures we see listed here. Nowhere near that, but it's going to get it's going to get warm today. Reservations. People are sending reservations. They send them to info at woodblock.com, and they ask for a lunch reservation or a dinner reservation. The guy included his phone number, which I didn't include in the little clip I sent you. <laughs> they send them to info at woodblock.com. I mentioned why this happens. Does anybody remember? Can anybody get this? What's the deal? What are these people doing? Why is this happening? Info at woodblock.com. They send lunch reservations. I passed it on to the normal place, the place it should have gone, and she wrote back and said, oh my God, again, again? Next time you're in the area, you got lunch on me. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it's called, uh, what's it called? No, it's just called Woodblock, I guess. It's in Redmond, near the Microsoft office. And in fact, the guy who made the reservation this morning was an email address at Microsoft.com. It seems Microsoft execs really love that place. So, it's a restaurant called, I guess it's called Woodblock or something, and it's in, it's in Redmond. I forget their email. I forget their domain name. Woodblock. Woodblock something. Woodblockredmond.com. I can't remember. Paper is out. There's only one printer up there this morning. That's Day Chan. She's finishing the final batch. And in fact, I think she'll be finished today. She's finishing the final batch of the ka 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 print. And we'll put that one behind us for a while. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. All right, so we have, uh, there's some more match label prints came in. We can look at them at show and tell. Maybe, or we'll look at the black book, one or the other. And the top secret unveiled today. We have a brand new woodblock. Color a little bit something? What color is it? What have we got today? This is the carving for the August print in this year's series. And it is, Kantar's got it. This is indeed boxwood. And I'm a little bit nervous about it because it's not cured or dried as well as it should be. So I am nervous that we're gonna end up with a split in it. There's nothing I can do about it at the moment. It's just going to be full speed ahead. And as for the image, it's going to be five match tables all in a row. I said we'd feature the Persuader, and I said it was Japanese festivals. Dave did have time to put the postcard prints in a bath, and I got the first two, and I put them on my desk yesterday, and I can no longer find them. I was gonna show you this morning, but I can't find the damn things. So it may, if I can find them, we'll look at them today. If I can't, it'll have to be next time. Why boxwood? Because we have a lot of fine lines on this print. It's, it's, it wouldn't really demand boxwood. If we had a good piece of cherry, it would be okay. But we just don't have any cherry anywhere near suitable for this. So it's gonna be boxwood sort of by, uh, by key block number two, which will be printed in a very light gray. Key block number one, which will be black,
I think you get what's going on here. I said this was a festival. Do we get what's happening here? Do we understand which festival this is? That's dark black. This is going to be a faint gray. Vivid KP has got it. She said the lines look kind of boxy. They do indeed. There are no curved lines here. None at all. There's not a single curved line on the key block. Nobody's got it yet. Okay, it doesn't matter. We don't have to say anything. It'll come. The flames. And yes, these are part of the set. The two blank ones are part of the set. Ice sculptures, no, you're about 50 degrees, 180 degrees in the wrong direction. <laughs> Let's paste it down. Now, actually, I have got a real, uh, I've got a real decision to make here. It's gonna be a, a, a set of five prints. If I did this, if I put them down in the corner here, okay, and then we're gonna use the other half of the block, we'll turn it round and we'll do this. But what we want to do, we don't want to print with paper that's long and thin. We want to print with a more rectangular kind of paper. So when it comes time to print, we're going to cut the paper in about this shape to do two sets. And we put the paper in the corner here and print the bottom and then turn it round and print it again. But that means it would bang into something that's up at the top here. So if I've got something carved there on a different registration mark, it's going to bump. So one way to do this, and I'm not sure if I've ever done this before here on the stream, is this. Thinking out loud, what we might do, Fire Festival, Nozawa, no, no, no. I thought you would have this. Oh my God, I thought people would guess this straight away. If we put the registration marks, I'm just thinking out loud here. If we put a set of registration marks there, and I paste this key block here, and then if I put another set of registration marks the other way around, and we put key number two up, there. Then when the printers were printing with their paper that was about this big, they would have to prepare a stand up there to support the paper, something like this to support the paper. It would print, and they would print just the bottom row, and the top wouldn't bang into anything. Then they flip the block, they print this, print the bottom row, and the top wouldn't bang into anything. Whereas if we put the registration mark here and do the opposing one, like we did with the boat the other day, then they would bang into each other. So I am thinking this is what we're going to do. The printers will be happy and unhappy. They will be happy because there's no banging. They don't have to avoid any area, but they'll be a little unhappy because they won't be putting the paper right in the bottom of the block here. They'll be putting the paper up at the top of the block, and they'll have to reach out a little bit when they're doing their printing. It's going to be no big deal. I think that's what we're going to do. My gosh, nobody guesses this festival. Oh my god. Oh my god. Fire is in quotation marks. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. It's maybe the most, one of the most, one of the three most famous festivals in the country. <laughs> There's nothing to say about it. Absolutely, one of the most famous festivals in the country. 
bar none. Tanabata no. It's a specific festival to a specific region. Do I have to show the picture? I don't know, I don't have it here. It's okay, whatever, if you get it, you get it. <sighs> Doesn't matter. I'm taking my time here because I'm really, really concerned about this wood, you know. This actually right here is the best part of the wood. You can see the plank here. This is the central part of the plank and this is the best part of the wood right there. Not this dark part up at the top, you know. I don't know what to do. There's also a split up at the corner. the two key blocks. One is going to be dark black and prominent, the other one will be grey and almost invisible, but it will be more delicate. So another idea, you know, pull that down here, put the grey one in that prime area of the block. or put the main key in the prime area and put the grey one up in the other area. I'm really not sure what to do here. Koringami has got something here. Koringami has got something. He says they could represent floats. Koringami. Someone says there's two blank ones. They're only blank on the key block. They are not blank on the color blocks. We will be printing a full batch of color right across all five. They're not blank. This is going to be a set of five prints. <laughs> Every festival has floats. <laughs> well, yes and no. <laughs> I'm astonished that you can't get this from this image. I'm astonished. I'm not being, being you know, I'm not even trying to tease you guys. To me, this is absolutely obvious. We're talking about fire in the background, and we're talking about jagged lines. Somebody's got it. Recon beef has got it. Chocolate eggs to the map. Chocolate eggs. Chocolate eggs. <laughs> Let me get the picture. Hang on a sec. Let me show you the picture. Add an image. Just take me a moment here. Just a moment. Just a sec. Add an image. One second, please. Browse my computer for the image. You forget we don't all live in Japan. Okay, 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 okay. But uh, whatever. I thought this one was absolutely obvious. Doesn't matter. Let's have a look at the image. The image here is just of the three central... You get the idea. And there's two, there's two more. The crowd at the bottom goes off to the left and off to the right, and this is a float that's going down the street. And it's the big Nebuta Matsuri. 
and it's three people. It's Jed on the left, I guess, and it's somebody in the middle <laughs> with a little Easter egg, and then somebody on the right, not quite sure who that might be representing. So, anyway, it's going to be <laughs> so. <laughs> It's going to be fun. It's going to be difficult. That gradation is something really difficult. The gradation coming down from the top. It's a dark gradation that comes down and down and down and down and down, but it doesn't hit the bottom. That's difficult. It's easy for us to do a thin gradation at the top. It's very difficult to do a deep, deep gradation that comes all the way down and then fades out to nothing. That's tough. And the printers are looking at this and saying, oh my God, what? Are we really going to be able to do that? And yes, of course, they're going to be able to do it. Okay. Now, enough fooling around. Let me get to work. By the way, don't tell anybody about that stuff, okay? This is August. August. Festival month. August. So there we go. We're going to do it this way then. We're going to go heads and tails with, you know, uh, facing away from each other. One will go there and we will print it here. Even though stuff will be carved here, the printers will skip it when they're printing the top. And another one will go here in this area. And all it is now is me to decide which is which. And it's a bit of a paradox. That's the better piece of wood. This is a bit softer wood. But the, I'll put the key block on the better piece of wood. Let's just do that. Let's just do that. It says, Dave, do I drive one of these cool mini trucks? Do I, I don't drive anything. I got my first driver's license when I was 21 or 22. And I gave it up when I was, it would have been 29. I haven't had a driver's license 40, 50, 60, in 40 years. So I don't drive anything. They scare me, those things. They scare me. And anyway, there's no use in my life now. There isn't the slightest use for anything to drive living in this city. So, a lot easier to not drive when you're in Tokyo. Okay. How long would it take to drive from Ome to Asakusa? It would depend on the time of day, and it would depend on whether or not you decided to go by the freeway or not. We've done it all the time. aoyama san went out there last week. He had to do some work up there making cases and stuff. Oh, that long. If you avoid rush hour and stuff, it would be maybe just over an hour. If you're in rush hour, all bets are off. But. Uh, between an hour and 90 minutes, kind of.
Google will tell you, you put the two addresses in. are set up. Don't have scissors here. Okay, we are going to use wood glue, not our honey. No honey for this one because uh, we're using very, very thin lines here and we want this thing not to come off when I carve half the lines. So. It doesn't really make much difference. It's not soaking in much of anything. This wood is dense, dense, dense. Is that a vegetable truck? Vegetable truck to show. I forget what it's called. I don't know. Okay, nice thin layer of white glue. We're gonna get a peel. This is five mome gumpy, and here's the peel. The gumpy has stuck to the backing paper, so it's gonna peel as we pull the backing paper off. We're gonna get two in one here. Here we go, there's the gumpy. <laughs> Automatic peel, so I, you can score cards if you like, but it's not me that's doing the scoring today. Look at that. It's a perfect peel, but the gumpy is still on the backing sheet. How can I show you? Look, 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 look. Look at this. There's the part that we would have peeled. Look at this, this is crazy. Did I cheat? I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> let's, let's have the peel the other way around. It's okay. <laughs> let's peel it off the backing sheet. Look at this. <laughs> there you go. We've got a real piece of gumpy. <laughs> Okay, what's happening there is when I did the spray last night, I must have got the spray quite strong. 
so that the gumpy was sprayed to the backing sheet quite strongly. And it's thick, good number five, so half of it stayed on the backing sheet and half of it stayed on the block. Perfect. Well, if that isn't a perfect peel, I don't know what is. Great peel. Great peel. There's only one problem. <laughs> so I don't know if you can see it or not. I guess you can't see it. It won't be a long-term problem, but it is an issue. Look at this. Can you see this? If I zoom in. I might need to get the light just right. No, I think maybe you guys can't see it. There it is, there it is. Can you see it? It's a hair glued on to the surface of the block, a thin, faint, white hair. When I put the glue on, I dabbed it, I reached out for the paper to put it down. At the moment, I reached out from somewhere, a thin, faint, white hair went into the glue. I didn't notice it. I put down my hunched on top of it, and there it is. There's a hair <laughs> glued onto the block. <laughs> you can see it there. Where did that come from? I wonder where that could have come from. Do I need to start wearing a hairnet for this job? It, if we ever do barren cookies, you know, I'll, I have nothing to do with that. I can't be in the kitchen, obviously. Absolutely. Dave will keep out of the kitchen. All right, enough talk, enough fooling around. Let's get to work. Enough already. There's water, I sprayed water on it. That was a 400 grit, and this is a 1,000. There was a slight uh, chip. 
<clears throat> I hadn't really wanted to sharpen because as I told you last week, we had a really good piece of steel here. We had a good part of the blade, we had a wonderful bevel, we had a good sharpen, and it was working really well. But the other day when I was carving one of the color blocks, I did pop the tip a little bit. And now with this uh, key block line, we need a good tip on this. So that was a 400 grit, this is a 1000 grit. It's also getting a bit old, so I think it's probably not really a thousand anymore. It's maybe 1200 or something, I don't know. I got the angle wrong. I have to go and fix it. Back to the 400. Wasting steel. Concentrate, Dave. Back to the 400. When I did the thousand, I had my hand up too far. I got the angle wrong. I wasn't concentrating. We could use a jig, I guess. You got a little roller jig, clamp the chisel in, roll it across the stone, you get exactly the same angle every time. With these little tiny blades, it is the most difficult part of this job, you know. The bigger the blades are, the easier it is to maintain the angle when you're rubbing on the stone. And the smaller they are, the more difficult it is. That's why I'm sort of cheating here by rubbing on the mat here. My left hand is rubbing on the mat, which acts as a support to give me a chance to get the same angle. Finish off with the real stone, of course. I should get an artificial stone for one of these for this for this last stage too but it's the we've talked about it before I just I don't want to completely give up using natural stones you know <laughs> I don't know. there's no real uh, there's nothing I can tell you why am I using a natural stone for the last step and not for the first two I can't give you a specific reason other than just just it kind of it feels nice you know I'm sure artificial stones would work for this last step as well.
Okay, there we go. Not the best sharpening we've ever done here. Let's have a look. Can we focus on it? You see our hollow ground on the back. And if we can find our little bevel on the back, I can't see if I can get the light ready. There it is. Along the edge, there's a slight bevel along the edge on the back side. You can just barely see it there. Not the best sharpening we've ever done. Okay, enough fooling around. Let's finally get to work. As you can tell from the sound of there, Thursday is recycle garbage. It's cans and bottles and paper and all that stuff out there. Okay, where are we going to start? Should we start with Jed? Let me get it set. Where am I going to be carving here? I got the location set. That's my finger. Okay, let's give it a go. What's the reason for using boxwood in this piece? Two reasons. One is that it is a print that requires fine detail. We want the wood to hold the detail and we want the print to last for a long time, the block to last for a long time. But the other reason is this, this, this level of image could be done with a good piece of cherry if I had a good piece of cherry and I don't. So we're struggling with our cherry right now and we do have a bit of boxwood that seems suitable so that's why we've gone with boxwood for this one. The last few, the, the um, May print of this year's series and the July and the August and September are all going to be carved on boxwood. Simply because we're struggling to obtain any kind of reasonable cherry wood. Now there's something about this one you're going to be watching me carve this for the next couple of weeks. This is our August print, so I've got to get it ready before July. The printers want to get started at the beginning of July. So I'll be doing a lot of work on stream, but I'll also be doing a lot of work off stream. So you're not going to see the whole process. We simply can't wait. I can't work just six hours a week on this thing. I have to work a number of hours every day. And the unusual thing about this key block is there is not one curved line on it. The entire thing, to make it look like one of those Nebuta floats, is all straight lines. So this is a bit of a bizarre carving for me. It's going to be stroke by stroke. One stroke there, straight section. Another straight one. And another straight one. This would have been a perfect job for a beginner carver. No curves. It's going to be fun. I'm glad I'm not on the printing crew because that gradation is scary, but this is going to be a fun print to make. <clears throat> so, 
this, as somebody said, we carefully planned this. We put a hair on the block for comparison. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> I should carve it by mistake. I should carve it into the print. The name of the festival is the Nebuta, sometimes spelled Neputa. You'll see it spelled both ways, N-E-P-U-T-A and N-E-B-U-T-A. And the language has changed and evolved over the years. And uh, I don't know which is authentic, but you'll see it spelled both ways. This is going to be fun, peaceful work. And I really wish that this was all I had on my plate right now. First thing up this morning after the staff gets here, Ayama san's coming in a few minutes at nine o'clock, and I have a job to ask her to help me with this morning, and she's not gonna like it. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Maybe I can get Ayama san to do it. It's about an auction. I, wa I won, quote, unquote, an auction last night on Yahoo Auctions, but I'm not gonna pay the guy, because it was, uh, what's the word in English? It's uh, when somebody pumps it up artificially. I forget the name in an auction. The guy was a, was a jerk. He got his friends to pump it up. And it's clear what... So there's no way I'll be paying for it, but I'm gonna refuse and he's gonna give me a black mark and I'll give him a black mark and around and around we go. It was a, it, about $500 package of prints. And I, I was willing to pay about $500, but I really didn't want to. About $400 was what I wanted to pay, but anyway, if it had to go that high, I would have paid $500. So I put, f a few minutes before the end of the auction, I put in my $500. It was still three something, whatever. And it went to whatever, 410 or 420. Then a new person jumped in who hadn't been in the auction before, and he pushed me, pushed me, pushed me, pushed me, pushed me automatically until it broke my 500 and it ended up 510 and he won the auction. I thought, okay, whatever, somebody got it. And then <clears throat> the guy who runs the auction canceled that guy's bid. So when you do that, Yahoo then goes back to the beginning and it puts it all back up to where you were and I was there at 380 or whatever. And then another new person jumps in who hadn't been in the auction before and he bids it up again this time, but this time he stops one or two or three dollars just below my maximum bid which left me as the winner. <clears throat> so this is clearly a fake. The guy has got friend number one to run me up to find my limit. He cancels out friend number one. Friend number two jumps in and bids up to just under my limit. This is an absolute fraud. So he's, he's already sending the letter. Hey, please get signed in. You know, pay the bill, pay the bill. And we are not going to pay the bill. This happens all the freaking time on Yahoo Auctions. So I've got to spend a bit of time this morning going back to look at some of his other auctions. We will see the same pattern on other auctions and then tell him, get out of here, guy, we're done. And it's no good writing to Yahoo. They don't care. They won't even reply to me. Well, you say he messed with the wrong dude. Simply, uh, you know, I, I have no recourse. So I'm going to end up with a black mark and he's going to end up with a black mark and that's all there is to it. And I think Yahoo should build systems. They could easily write a software that would look for this pattern. This is a very common fraud pattern and it would easily be detectable by software. But they don't care. They want prices to go as high as possible because they get a percentage of every sale. And they don't want any, any sniff of fraud, so they don't want to talk about it. Now, the other thing about prints like this, carving these things with thin lines, it's all very well to get a nice piece of boxwood and carve a bunch of thin lines. That's cool. But when the line is going to be the division between colors, this is going to be a piece of paper, that's going to be the background. And as you saw, the background for this print is going to be dark, 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 dark. The thinner I make this line, the more difficult it is for the printers to do. The registration has to be tighter, tighter, tighter. So it gets counterproductive if you make the lines too thin. And on this one, these festival floats, this, th these black lines are supposed to be, you know, the black bamboo lines of the actual, of the actual float. So before I printed this out last night, I played around in Photoshop with stroke to try and figure out the right thickness 
for these lines. Jet, of course, drew it with fine, delicate hairlines. Totally impractical for this. So I did, I fattened them up like crazy, but still I'm not sure. They might be too thin still, I don't know. Let's have a look at one of these lines. Let's clear one off both sides just to have a look and see what we got. When I was in Photoshop, I tried. I fattened them up a whole lot. I thinned them down a whole lot. I tried to get the, uh, the best appearance, the ones that made it look like a festival float. When you make them too fat, it's just too much black in the image too thin it's way too much trouble for the printers so somewhere around there I guess I don't know if we pop up that image again you can see the thickness of the black lines they're thick enough if we make them any thicker than this it, it just dominates the image but any thinner and it just doesn't look right so I think what you see there is about what should be right I don't know who knows in for a dime, in for a dollar. We're away, we're up and running now on this. It's nice wood though, ooh, nice and smooth wood, beautiful.
This is going to be strange actually carving nothing but straight lines for the next few days. Can we get any closer without losing focus? I don't know. Let's try. When you're doing outlines, do I cut straight down? No, we're, we're doing a mountain. The leftover lines are mountains. Right? The, the line has a top, and they are at an angle, something, something like this. They're at an angle. They won't be 45. It'll be something like this. There's our silver hair getting cut. <laughs> Coming along, coming along. <clears throat> Lots of good conversation today. Wow, good. I can't catch all this, so go for it. Thank you. If you have any questions for me, just repeat them. Hopefully, I can get to the questions. Sorry. Looks like good conversation. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Nice little community there. to lots of discussion about supplies and stuff, you know, it's still so difficult, you know. Matsumusan here in Tokyo is, is running as well as he can, but with the, with the uh, logistics and supply chain issues, my God, it's tough, you know. I got some awagami paper the other day for printing those shear certificates. Remember the one I was carving last week? We use awagami's inkjet paper, you know. And when I was on their website ordering it, it was no problem. I just ordered it and it came through the next day because it's domestic Japanese shipping. 
but they've got a note on their website. Uh, I, said, I forget what they said. I think they said our business has been decimated by the postage problems. You know, I think it's worse than decimated. Decimated is you lose one in ten. It's a lot, lot worse. You know? Our situation here, we are just the girls pivot daily. Okumura san, Ayano san, and Watanabe san, they are pivoting daily with the price lists and, and no-go lists from the post office, from DHL, FedEx, and UPS. And they look at the orders that are in overnight and what we have to ship, and they daily hit their spreadsheets based on newest data. It's crazy. It's like the kind of thing I always thought with people like, people who are arranging tankers, shipping oil and stuff, they every day they've got you hire this tanker, not that tanker, you check your spot market prices. Our girls to ship woodblock prints are doing this every freaking day. The prices are insane. The, 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 just whatever, whatever. The FedEx type people, the prices are jelly. What they tell you isn't what it comes on the invoice. When you ask them, they say, oh yeah, yeah, yeah okay, okay, okay. It's just a nightmare. And these two girls spend most of their time now figuring out shipping issues, how to get prints to people, and how to get it to people the safe way, and how to get it to people a reasonably cheap way. It's crazy. No, I think decimated means one in 10 is lost. This is the Roman legions, right? You go down, you pick one in 10 to kill. I think that's what it means, decimated. Nowadays, I think people use the word decimated just meaning a whole bunch, but technically deca is once in ten, I believe. What's driving the postage? You tell me. You tell me. It's COVID in China. It's lack of tourism coming in and out of Japan. It's war. The, the shipping from me to Europe in normal times, most of the sort of EMS packages go in the underbellies of tourist planes going back and forth between here and Europe. To get from here in Europe now, you can't do that because it flies over Russia. So people who are flying to Europe here are going through Dubai or someplace, and the postage and, and shipping have uh, reflected that. I don't know, of course. All we know is the number at the back. Yeah? But my God, it's trouble. All we want, just please, is some return to normality, you know. We will never, ever, ever complain again about anything <laughs> if we can just get back to where we were before. <laughs> Dear Santa Claus, what do I want for Christmas this year? Just to go back in time three years. I will never complain again. There's something else about this image, you know, there's three people doing you know, real jobs. There's an illustrator, presumably Jed here, he's drawing something with a Japanese fude pen. Then there is uh, some carver here, he is hammering a chisel with something, and then there's a printer. And when Jed drew this, and when I set it up for carving, when I figured out the line work and stuff last night, we have to decide how realistic is this supposed to be. It's a depiction of a festival float and you know, there's limitations. They're made with bits of bamboo stuck together and, and tissue paper, washi paper pasted over the top of it. There's limitations as to how real the objects can look. So we've got this thing here. Jed is holding this brush, and if anybody knows how you hold brushes, this isn't how it's done. He's got this brush in a fist, smashing at something. Then the carver, the carver also, he's not even holding a, a chisel that would be used by a hammer. The chisel I'm holding is one of the ones that doesn't actually get used by a hammer. And it's at a super high angle, and there's no way this is realistic in any way whatsoever. If I pop up the image again, we can see this, you know. I mean, oh my God, the brush is not realistic, the hammering is not realistic, the baron is sort of close to being realistic. 
but I think it doesn't matter. But it was good fun, good fun. It doesn't matter. It's, it makes it look more authentic to me, you know. Morning. Oh, Yana san good morning. Nine o'clock. She's 49 seconds late today. Oh, my God. Sorry. It's about All right. So, so, so. How are things today? What are you talking about? In the convenience store? What? Uh, convenience store. Do you bring your lunch or did you buy your lunch? Uh, I brought my lunch uh, and I was going to buy a snack too. Uh, uh, I One of those is going to be a young auction. Yes, 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 yes. Should I bring it to Aoyama-san or you? What is that one? Kubota-san. Oh, it's Kubota. Yeah, leave it here. It's me. It's for me. Okay. Yeah. Friends from Kubota-san. doing the, uh, it's the Hiroshi Yoshida boat. You've got back orders for this, I think. People waiting for it? Hey, what should we do at the end of this stream? When we get closer to show and tell time, I have a package just arrived today. I have another package that arrived yesterday. Oh, what to do, what to do? of riches today. What to do? What's this? Oshibori man? No, I don't. I can't see. This is why we wanted to use that glue. See what's happening here. This bottom line of the brush, there's a line here. I've cut one side of it and cut out the inside of the brush stroke, of the brush area. And now look at this. I can no longer really clearly see that line because the paper actually started to peel off a little bit. So I've got to be really careful. If I wander away and do some more parts of this and come back here, that line will be gone. So maybe I put the glue on a little bit too thinly. I'm not quite sure. But I'm going to cut this while I can still see it. This is really a critical point, actually. Whenever you're working with thin lines, that gumpy paper has to be stuck onto that block really, really, really carefully. <coughs> Otherwise, when you cut one side of the line, the paper will lift off and you've lost the other side of the line. This was trouble for me back at the beginning because I was just following what I had, been, what I had seen. You know. Yamato Nori, light glue, a little light mucilage. But for a key block, it's much better to have stronger glue.
Mm. Peaceful work, peaceful work. I could do this all day if I were allowed to. All day. Okay, let's see, hang on a sec. How much time do we have to show and tell? All right. Let's have a look. What should we open today? Okay, let's do that. Let's open that package you just arrived when we get there. Let's have a look inside. A few more minutes. Let's get some more coffee done first, and we'll open that little package you just arrived. There's the stuff in there. I know what it is, and there's stuff in there that I don't know what it is. We bought it sort of, hmm, this looks interesting. down the street, the new uh, restaurant that's opening soon. They're doing really well with their renovations. They're coming along very well. It looks like they're almost finished. Every time I go by, I have a peek in there and check and see what's going on. They're busy, busy, busy. They're sort of at the last stage now. They're, they're painting and varnishing the woodwork and things like that. So it looks like they're almost ready to go. So I'm looking forward to getting in there, getting in there and trying some, uh, some soup curry.
<laughs> two minutes, two minutes. Tick, 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 tick. All I would have taken to do to finish this block, you know, if I had nothing else to do, if I was just going to sit here today and do all this. Could I finish it today? I'm not quite sure. Maybe. You know, what have I done here? This area, I've done this in about 30 minutes or so. I guess maybe to do the whole thing, it could be a day's work. I'm not quite sure. A bit more than a day, maybe, depending on how relaxed I was. So I'm not sure when we're going to see the continuation. Now, this is now Thursday morning for me. The next dream will be Saturday morning. And uh, I, as I said, I will also be working off stream on this because I've got to get going on it. So it's possible that this key block will be finished next time, next time we meet. I don't know. It all depends on the other work that's going to go on here. As soon as I put this away today, what's going to come pouring in on my desk from Ayano San and the other people, I don't know. Okay, let's do show and tell for the last 15 minutes here. Let's put this block away. Let's have a recap. You can see how it's going. You can see the work. You know, if I just sat here quietly and worked, chuk, 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 maybe an hour, two hours, maybe a couple of hours, a couple of hours, you could do this in a day. It would be no problem. It would be no problem. Okay, let's get some prints. I know. I understand. What happened to the box from Kubota-san? Uh, should I open it? Sorry. No. Could, no. Could you could you drop it off? Let me have a peek at it. Sure. I'll use it here. I'll I'll open both of these. I'm supposed to be doing. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. No, if you just 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 pass it over. Okay. Just have a go. Alright. Okay. Thank you. No problem. That's all right. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Thank you very much. Okay. We'll do a quick look at what's inside here. Then we'll move to the show and tell. This is how they come back from Kubota-san. We send in the blocks and the paper and a mihon. He gets a sample. And that's all this guy needs. He's done lots of work for us before. He knows Mokohankan style. He knows what we want. He knows what we do. So it's a minimum of communication, a maximum of production. But when we sent this to him last week, he wasn't able to get going straight away. He sent, he phoned me up first, and then he sent back the key block. He said, Dave, I can't do the job because the key block has a chip in it. And it did. He sent back the key block, and whoever had printed it previously. I know, I understand. Can I bother you again? I'm really, really sorry. You're busy. Can you take the box away? I'm sorry. <laughs> I should have planned this a bit more carefully. Sorry, go back. Hi. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, that's heavy. That's, it's heavy. that's the blocks. So, 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 so. So he sent back the block, and it had a chip. We would say in Japanese, kakita tokoro ga atta. If I show you a wood block, and I'll, whatever, here's just some other random wood block. It's sitting on the bench here. And it was a black key block, and one place on the block was showing white and it had been dinged. And one of the outside lines of the image, somewhere, the previous printer, after printing it, had maybe put the, print, the blocks to dry on the wall, somebody knocked it, and bang, one of the border marks was broken. And it showed white, so it had been done since the last time somebody had printed it. So he sent it back, said, Dave, what do you want to do? You know, do you want me to continue? And in that case, it would have a gap on the print Oh, no, I said, no, 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 send it back. I'll fix it, I'll fix it, I'll fix it. So he got delayed. 
he sent it back to me by Takubin. I fixed it right away and I called him up and said, should I bring this over? He said, no, no, it's okay. And just luckily this happened on the weekend last week. So I fixed it over the Saturday, sent it back to him. It shipped Sunday. He was ready to start again Monday morning. Very, very, very lucky timing. It would have been cool if I'd been on the stream to do that, but uh, we just had no chance. He just, we just had to get it going right away. If only I had a knife. Okay, this isn't the show and tell. We don't use too much time here, Dave. Just begin. Bingo. Here we are, good, rich, deep color. Where have you seen this print before? He 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 he. I think there's 80 of them, 80 or 90, maybe 90 copies, I don't remember. All waiting to go out into the world. And the sizing looks like it's really nice. I am now in trouble here because the sizing, since I left for Canada at the beginning of April, Aoyama-san has done all the sizing here. The first few jobs he did, it's no, no insult to him to say this, the first few jobs he did were chaos. The printers were complaining, it was chaos. He got better, they told him what to do, he did it, he figured out what to do, and we are now two months down the road, nearly three months down the road, and he is handling this very, very well. The printers are happy, Aoyama-san is not so happy because he's doing all his previous work and now he has done all the sizing. <laughs> so he's looking at me saying, oh, now when are we going to get back to normal? And I'm looking at him saying, oh, I think we have a new normal. <laughs> I don't know. I guess, honestly speaking, we will have to end up doing it together because it's too much work just to dump on one guy. But it is really, really good news that we now have somebody else who is capable of doing this. Absolutely. We just have to work out a proper balance. Okay, we have stuff in here and there may be now too much in here for a full show and tell. We'll see. If there is, we'll just save it for later. they would use a tape, recyclable tape, you know. Because we can't pull this off, because we've got to cut it off because of this tape, I won't be able to reuse this poly. Old man, grumpy, grumpy. I want to reuse this stuff as much as possible. But we can't do it. some interesting stuff here today. This is the takings from three separate Yahoo auctions last week. The same guy. It wasn't, a, it wasn't a dealer. It was some kind of junk dealer who got hold of some stuff. And there are three separate things to look at. First thing is, it's a little, what they call in Japanese, mame hon. Mame, bean. I don't know why the, you know, why this expression got started years ago. Mame hon, the literal translation is bean, as in soybeans, beans, book. It's a bean book. Now, such things also exist in the West. Little, tiny, tiny, tiny books. Let's have a look and see what we've got here. It's all glued together, pasted together. It's all glued back and forth. It's coming apart. Oh, look at this. That's the back of the book.
Okay, we have flower, bird. Mm. Gosh. Not sure. This is un. I'm not sure any of these two here. It's flowers and bird patterns and pictures. Let's see what's inside. This is all backing sheets. The stuff was originally glued together back to back. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I think though, I think, just a minute, just a minute. I think this is not a wood block. Hang on a moment here. Do we have a date? I can't see a date at the back. We'll get a date on it later. Let's have a look. I think... No, it could be woodblock, actually. Yes, it could actually be little woodblock. Look at that. Look at the scale of these things. God, look at the scale of these things. What's the theme here? Look at this. I think what we have here is little blocks carved in wood, but printed in a press. It's mixed, it's mixed. Some of this is done with a buron, not a knife. So this could be etched, not not etched, this could be on a metal engraving. This is a mixed media. This one's not woodblock, absolutely. This is somebody with a buran on a copper plate. He's scraping into a copper plate. Then when it's printed, ink goes in the engraved lines. This one. This stuff looks like woodblock. I'm going to have to get this under the microscope. paper it was so thin they glued it together with with you know other stuff inside to give it some body okay I get to hold off on my my diagnosis of what this is my guess now after looking at a few of these this is probably not wood block these are metal plate engravings I believe these are engraved on metal plate. Yes, look at this, the stippling here at the bottom. This is not woodblock stippling. This is metal plate en en engraving by hand. Yeah, you can see it in the stippling inside the guy's kimono. This is at a time, in the Meiji time, when they were experimenting with lots and lots and lots of different uh, ways to make images. Woodblock printing was on the way out, and other type of printing was on the way in. My God, it's full of detail. Look at this. Still, even somebody has engraved these. There's nothing photographic about this. Kachoga. Yeah, you can see here clearly, this is absolutely not a woodblock print. You can see, this is metal engraving. Anyway, let's move on, move on, move on, move on, move on. There's a lot more stuff to look at here. This one is a classic wood block. Now this one is fun. This is fun. I really, really wanted to get this one because I don't have enough examples of this kind of work in our collection. Do you understand what it is you're looking at? Let me try and get a big overview of this. We've seen similar things before in our show and tell. Hands up, who can tell me what this is? We've had them before. You got it, Vivid KP's got it. It's a game, it's a sugo Sugu, sugoroku, sugoroku. I forget the pronunciation. Ah! I understand. Su, su. 
。すごろく。すごろくじゃない。すごろく。いやいやいやいやいや、オッケーオッケー。Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And this is a sugoroku game. It's a pieces that people would gather around with dice and pieces and do bang, 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 bang. And it's a fuke theme. This one is Nihon Sanke. And it's three, which is actually four famous places in Japan, famous areas in Japan. It's Edo Hake. It's Kanazawa Hake. We have again Kanazawa Hake. And we have Omi Hake. So it's a bunch of pictures taken from, let me just fold it so I can zoom in here. It's a bunch of pictures taken from famous places in Japan. It's all wood block, and you would throw this on the floor, and you would sit down and get your dice out and have a go at it. And without going over how the gameplay works, there's a starting place where everybody starts, and there's a goal, but it's not a track that you go around step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. When you land on any given place, How you land there just comes in a minute. You've got instructions. If you roll a two, you go there. If you roll a four, you go there. If you roll a five, you go there to that place. So after you're on this one, when it's your turn next, you pick up your dial, your dice, and you roll. If it's one, you just stay there. You don't go anywhere. If you've got a four, you go to it looks like Mitsui. And somewhere on here, there must be a picture. Of a place related to something to do with Mitsui. So you then jump over, you try and find it. Blah, 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 blah. Somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. There must be something Mitsui. I can't see it. But anyway, you jump over to that place. And then it, each, each one of these places has its own set of instructions on your next turn. If you roll a two, you go to Ueno. If you go to three, you go to, what does it say? Uchigo, I'm upside down here. If you roll a five, if you roll a six, you go to those places that are mentioned. And you just follow the instructions. And then to win, you have to land on one of the squares and roll the right dice that says you go to Agadi, the top. This is the place you go to win. This is the goal. So you can't tell. As people are moving around this game, as they're all playing, nobody knows who's winning. Nobody knows how you're going to get farther in the future. All you know is you're just following the instructions, rolling your dice, and hopefully you will get lucky. There's no skill whatsoever involved in this. And you can actually figure out how to get there by working out backwards. If you have the Agari, try and figure out one of these, which one of these somewhere. Has the key to send you to the Agari. I'm looking around to find it. I can't find it here. And you work your way backwards. So you could actually figure out the, the, the way to get to this backwards. And they are woodblock prints. They've all been pasted onto a thicker backing sheet for obvious reasons to make this go. They're not tiny prints. Each one is maybe. Where's the borderline? There's a borderline. Oh, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. It looks like it may be six woodblock prints all together pasted onto a sheet. I'm not quite sure exactly. Let's zoom around some of these images. They're sort of rip offs of,、uh, of Hiroshi type prints. This is Amano Hashidate. Where am I here? With my finger. Amano Hashidate. That's a famous、uh, tourist spot up in Kyoto Prefecture. Uh, yeah, this is original. When it would date from, I have no idea. Nobody making something like this would have put a date on it. This is late Edo or maybe early Meiji. I don't know. Going by the paper, going by the appearance, going by the style. If I was going to put a date on it, I don't know. It could be anywhere from 1860 or 1870 through to 1900 or so. I really don't know. Yeah, it says they're based on Hiroshige images. 
we have a saxa here. So it's a board game. This is how board games were made and played back in the old days, before TV, before radio. It would have been good fun. Was this one used? I don't know. I guess you can see it's been scratched up a little bit, banged a little bit. Yeah, I would imagine the family that owned it did actually use this thing. I'm very happy to have got this. How much did we have to pay for this? Somebody's asking how much did we pay? Let me just have a look here. Yeah, this one I had to pay. This was not anything free. Here we go. Let me pop the link in. This is the link to the auction. I think those of you in Europe... This is the link to the auction. I think those of you in Europe... Might not be able to see it, but there it is. How much was it? I copied, but didn't even look. 5,200 yen, so in dollars right now, that's about about $40, which I think is, is very fair, very nice. I'm very happy. And uh, this piece of paper, which could have easily got tossed aside, has arrived now at a place where it's going to be cared for and respected and uh, photographed and scanned and put online. It's been beaten up. Absolutely, it's been beaten up. It's seen better days. There you are. Evening rain. We have hake. These are all hake, hake, hake. So everything you see here on this page, it's evening rain or night snow or descending geese. Can we find some descending geese? Let's put that one up. Here we go. This is the famous descending geese print by Hiroshige from his set Omi Hake. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Good, good, good. Okay, lots of work done today. Let's do this. Let's sign off now. I'll be back here two more days. I'll be working, of course, on that same print, but whether that key block might be finished, I might be working on the second block, I don't know, because I have to get going, 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 going. I can't wait on this for stream time. Someone's asking, do we stream often? It's three days a week, always at the same time. The schedule is on. If, you've got a, if you're looking at this on a browser, scroll down below the window here and you will see the schedule. It's on the Twitch channel page. Okay, guys. Thank you very much. I've got to get out of here now and get some work done. I'll see you next time. Thanks again to the mods for keeping track of everything and all the support from everybody else. We have a good floater. Okay, for me, a cup of coffee and i got to get to work. Bye for now. Thank you very much.